What is up everybody? I am Jeff with Two Moose Design and in today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to make a catch-all tray from the design process all the way to the finishing process. We're gonna start out with this simple tray, just a basic round tray, work our way up to this more advanced tray with an engraving down on the bottom. We'll cover how to run your zeros, how to change your bits, running multiple bits on one piece. So stick around and I think you'll like what we got for you. So most of our trays are made from scraps. We have a ton of cutoffs from our Etsy business and there's no sense of wasting them. So I just glue them together to get my blanks. Our trays typically range from six to 10 inches. And this is where the scraps end up in this overflowing box of pieces. I'll just glue these together until I get pieces that start to look like this. And then I'll just go ahead and run them all through the planer so they're the exact same thickness, which is crucial because I run multiple pieces at one time. And then I'll just double check that they're all the same thickness. And then I'll mark center, also choosing which face will be the top and which face will be the bottom. And this is my preferred hold down method. You can do whatever you like. Double sided tape works just fine too, but this is just as quick and easy. So let's jump into the software and start designing a tray. We're gonna start out with the six inch tray, just something easy and basic. We're gonna use Easel to design all this just because Easel's a free software. Eventually you're gonna to have to buy the subscription to get all the features, but it's, it's a great starting point. All right, so in Easel, so we're gonna make a couple extra files here because we're gonna need a few file windows to make this. So we're just gonna do a basic circle. Let's do a six inch Oh, right here, six inch circle. So this will create the cavity. Then we're gonna go over here into apps, select offsetter. And then the offsetter just makes a copy of whatever the shape you selected is and makes the same thing further out. So we're gonna do 0.45, okay, import. Delete the first one. So I'm gonna go here, clear out pocket, and then I like to do a depth, a depth of about 0.4. So I like to run my zero in the center of the piece, and in order to do that in easel, you go over here, zero, zero. So now we're gonna. use a quarter inch bit to cut out the outside shape. Make sure you set your tray depth here. My tray depth, my wood, my thickness is 0.8. Select the outer ring, put that all the way down. I will not run tabs. If you're new, I recommend running tabs. So let's command X this, the cavity, command X to cut, command V, Pace, 0.4 depth, and then we're going to use, and then we're going to use a three-quarter inch dish bit. We'll show you that a bit later. But you go to here under end mills and just enter 0.75. So these are the cut settings I'm going to run it at. I do not recommend running these on the X carve. These are for a Onefinity machine. Okay. So files are good to go. Now we're gonna export these to the Onefinity. Don't worry about any of this right now. We'll show you this later. Generate code, export code, and then do the same thing here. And then we're gonna upload this into the Onefinity post processor. And this is just a quick lapse of me uploading the files into the Onefinity post processor. So the last bit I used was an eighth inch down cut and this bit is much smaller than the bit I'm gonna use first to start the engraving. So I'm just gonna use that bit to line up the zero. So all I gotta do is lower it down and set the Z zero. And I just simply set it down slowly until it just barely scratches the surface. Once all your zeros are set, go ahead and push play. So 
So I recommend the bull bit a lot just because it's a great bit that removes a lot of material and it gives you that nice round edge on the inside of your tray. But a lot of people don't like the grooves that it leaves because it requires a bunch of sanding to remove those grooves. So we're gonna dive back into the software and show you guys how we're gonna solve that problem. So let's go up to the cut settings and we're gonna take the feed rate and double it. You could probably even go faster than this if your machine allows it. And then we're gonna move the depth all the way down to the final cut depth plus a little more. And then standard step over is 40, I believe. Under 10 will probably be fine. You can play with these settings later. So we're gonna go in here. And as you can see, this is how many passes the first removal of the material did, nice and spaced out. And I'll switch it over to this and look how many more passes this is gonna to do to clean that up. And as you can see, it's doing its job, cleaning everything up. I could have went a little bit deeper. I went 0.03, probably go 0.05 if you want a little bit cleaner look. I sand these anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. So now we're gonna move on to cutting out the tray. We're just gonna use a quarter inch down cut to achieve this. And I just raise the slider, change the bit, and then I'll move it over to the nearest edge to get my Z depth. You're gonna leave the X and the Y zero the exactly the same. If you're using easel, you can use last zero and then just reset your Z with the probe. But here I just simply reset my Z and then push play. So I personally don't use a Z probe. I used to use a Z probe with the X carve, but now with the Onefinity, it's just kind of an extra step. If you're new, I recommend using a Z probe, but I simply lower the bit down to the surface and then rotate the bit until it scratches the surface lightly. Here's an example of this. Some people slide a piece of paper underneath the bit. I'm just lazy, I guess. So we'll show you how we're gonna finish that tray with the other trays in the end of the video. So let's dive back into easel and start designing something a little more advanced just to show you guys my workflow and kind of how I go about creating these trays. Let's do one of these dog faces. Let's go with the boxer. Again, you can buy all these on our website. We have a bunch of varieties and are always adding more. So we're gonna have to make separate files. So I just open up a few extra windows. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to do the cavity and the outline. Okay. So you can see there's a bunch of little pieces. I'm just gonna command J to combine that all, or you can go up to here and go to this option, if that's what you want. We're gonna make this a little smaller since I don't need a giant tray. Go over to apps. Every software you use should have an offsetter. It'll probably look a little different. It may not be an app. I don't know, but it should have an offsetter. So 0.4, I like to do 0.4 because this is the distance from your engraving to the wall. And if you have a big old giant 90 degree V bit, it may hit this wall, so you may need to do more than that. I have a slender bit, so 0.4 is plenty for me. Imports all this crap. All we need is this outline, so go back to over to apps, over to offsetter. For the outside, I like about 0.48. Okay. Get rid of all this crap. So we're just gonna come, oop. We're just gonna line these up so they're nice and even. So this inside line is your cavity, clear out pocket. This outside line is your, where your shape's gonna be cut out. So you can either cut outside the line if you want a little more room. On shape path should be fine. So now I like to set my, my zero to the center of the center of the piece. And to do this in easel, you go to the here, make sure that's in the center, zero, zero. Now let's dissect this a little bit so that we can make our three files. Command X to remove. So Command V to paste, take the cavity, Command X to cut, Command V to paste. Okay, so for the cavity, I like to go about 0.4 deep. That's just my preference, do whatever you want. So we're gonna use a three quarter inch straight bit end mill. You have to do other for this. And these are my cut settings on the Onefinity. If you have a different machine, do not run these because your machine may not be able to handle them. Make sure your plunge rate is slow or you can ramp in just because it's such a large bit. Okay, so for the outside of the cut, or for cutting the outline, I like to use a quarter inch down cut, cut settings, 
for the Onefinity. These will not work very well on an X-Carve. Okay, so onto the engraving of the face. I like to use a 90 degree V-bit. That is what I use 90% of the time. So when you're cutting your, <clears throat> so when engraving your design in the bottom of the tray, you wanna find a nice happy medium. You don't want it too deep to where it's gonna take forever and look all weird. You also don't want it too shallow. If you go too shallow, it's just gonna look all weird and blown out. So for me, a happy medium is between 0.1 and 0.12. That's what works for me. Gives it nice detail and doesn't take forever. So let's put this back. So another thing to mention here is your safety height. Your safety height is super important. I don't feel this tray is an issue, but I know the lab is an issue. Where's the lab? Yeah. So, yeah. So if you don't set your safety height, which is how high the bit goes up and moves to go to another area. If you don't set this correctly, your bit's just gonna come along, come along and smash through here. This isn't an issue in all files, but this one I know it is. Along with the Frenchie, the Frenchie also gets the forehead cut off. So let's simulate this just to show you. So this will show you the path where the bit's gonna go. So as you can see here, the bit's gonna come, cut, cut, cut go straight across here, clipping this entire part of the tray off, and you're not gonna to be too happy. So to change that, we go in machine, advanced, safety height. So our tray depth, remember, is 0.4. So our tray is 0.4 deep, so the bit needs to go up high enough to clear this so it doesn't ram in there anything. So back over here, machine advanced. So 0.5, so our bit's gonna move up a half an inch before it moves to a new area of the tray. So here we go. So here now it shows you how high the bit's gonna go. It's gonna move up a half inch, move over, then come down. So when getting to this area here, it's gonna go up, clear this part that sticks out, and then come back down and do its engraving, move up, and so on. So I typically cut multiple trays at a time. It's just easier for me to juggle several trays than just babysitting it and watching one tray. So here's a good example of the safety height and how it clears the tray and doesn't ram into any of the walls. So now we're gonna export three, these three files. Make sure your safety height is higher than your tray cavity depth. Generate code. It's gonna take about 17 minutes to engrave the face. Same here, machine, advanced, generate code. The safety height only matters on this, the engraving when you're engraving down in the cavity. It does not matter when you're cutting out the outline or carving out the cavity. So now we're gonna import all these into the Onefinity Post Processor. If you're running an X-Carve, you just go over here and click Carve and just run your three separate files. And step one, lock down your tray. However you like, again, this is my preferred method. So since the last bit we used was a quarter inch down cut, that's just the bit I'm gonna start with. It doesn't really matter, so use whatever bit you'd like. So now that all my parameters are set, I'm gonna go into the software and lock them all in place. We're gonna leave the X and the Y zero the exact same the entire time. The machine finished cutting the outside of his tray. So now we're gonna put in this giant three quarter inch straight bit and that'll remove all the material for the cavity relatively quick. Lower the bit down to the surface. X and Y axis are the same. Lightly scratch the surface. And then we're gonna hop into the software. Just set the Z zero, leaving these two alone and then changing our file and pushing play. Now that this bit has finished removing the material for the cavity, we're gonna put in our 90 degree V bit. This is the bit I like to use. And then we're gonna lower it down. X and Y axis are the same. Use less zero. With this bit, it's a little hard to see. So maybe this will be a good time to use the paper trick, lower it down until you can just barely move a piece of paper underneath the bit, set your Z zero, and then just select your file and push play.
And voila, a beautiful boxer tray. So now that all of our trays are complete, let's dive into the finishing process. Overall, the finishing process is pretty simple. I don't spend a ton of time sanding these, maybe two or three minutes per tray, and that's it. Some wood species are prone to fuzzies. Fuzzies happen, buy one of these little bitty brushes, you can buy a kit for pretty cheap, and then just scrape it out. Probably one of my most asked questions, but Jeff, how do you sand down in the cavities? My sander don't fit. One of these multi-tools with a triangle head work wonders. I believe this is 220 or 320 grit, and that's literally all I do. Clean out the mill marks and then take a regular sander. I'll sand the inside if I can with 220, clean the outsides with 180, and uh, we are ready for finish. So my preferred finish is Walrus Oil Furniture Finish. It's a quick and easy to use. It's 100% vegan and, and all that good stuff. I just saturate the trays. I'll get them real nice and wet-like and then let them sit overnight and then wipe off the excess in the morning and these are good to go. Food safe, gives it nice rich color and it's easy to do. I should just make a little dunk tank for these, but one day. <laughs> 